Welcome again to the Preparing for Work series, the series that helps you through the transition between university and the workplace. My name's Carl, I'm from the Engineering Careers team, and today we'll be talking about building reputation and profile. When I think of my most successful graduates and interns, yes, their work speaks for itself, they're very good performers, but there's also other things to them that make them very successful. Um, so when I've broken it down, you know, I've kind of thought, okay, when I think of this person, I'm thinking actually that they're very well connected, they have some very influential allies, um, they have a very good reputation, um, they have, you know, obviously structured their career in a particular way, so they kind of know what they want already. Um, or they're certainly narrowing in on the funnel, you know, like kind of narrowing on what they what they want. Um, but they obviously also know what they're not good at, and so they're playing to their strengths. Uh, and obviously we all know in every role, there's things that we don't like and we're gonna have to do, um, but I'm talking about things that play to their strengths. And so I thought it would be interesting to look at any barriers uh, to success. So is it all about opportunity? If so, how do you create those opportunities and who can you use to help you create those things? Is it your manager? Is it these influential allies? Uh, is it just by keeping your, your ear to the ground and finding out what's going on, even on the basic thing like the local sort of um, SharePoint or intranet? Um, is it all about the structure? And if so, can you work within it? You know, if you want to be a manager in three or four years time, is this the right place for you? Are people a barrier, you know, um, and if so, can you build those influential allies and how do you do that and what can each one do for you um, and how they connect you to others? Have you identified a skills gap that perhaps stops you from furthering your career? And if so, when do you need to have it under your belt by, you know? Um, is it just a case of going on some training and putting it into action or do you need experience and skill set over a period of time? The great thing about time, which I know a lot of graduates and interns hate, um, is that over time you'll master your role and you find the things that you're really, really good at. You find your niche. And once you've found your USP, um, it's really important to build on that and to see that, uh, or for other people to see that as something that's attached to you. So when they think of you, they think of this thing. So one of the things is obviously visibility, which again, you know, in a hybrid role may not be so easy. So one thing I would say is to um, ensure that in team meetings or departmental meetings or webinars or conferences, anything you're attending, uh, whether it's in person or virtually, is to make a contribution. So um, see, you know, what your um, your niche is, for example, and talk about your um, the content of what you say has to be quite relevant. Um, and once people start associating you with that content, um, it starts to become a little bit um, interesting. And um, I think that part of that visibility and then part of that also not being shy about your successes also. So being sure um, that you're not boasting, obviously it's not about boasting, but there's um, some aspect of um, promoting what you do and um, your achievements. When I talk about being in the right place at the right time, I'm actually talking about a lovely piece of career theory called planned happenstance. Happenstance being luck. So how can you plan luck? Um, and I've known a lot of people who uh, have job searched through these means uh, because um, they're being quite creative and thinking outside the box. And so this is what you need to do. Um, if you have, for example, someone who you feel could be a good mentor or a champion for you, um, your interests align and um, you seem like they could be a really, really good person to, to have on board who could potentially further your career just by being in this, you know, a different room to you and, you know, talking about you positively. Um, then I would say, you know, think about, you know, going to um, maybe do a project with them, a comment with them, maybe think about um, if they're doing a webinar, you know, just interacting with them. And once you've had that interaction with them, then you can use LinkedIn, for example, to say, look, remember I had this conversation with you, it was great, can we connect? Any chance we could have a coffee or any chance we could um, have a chat on the phone, it'd be great to talk to you, I've got a couple of ideas. So, you know, it's it's just a way in that you're basically producing. If you found anything useful in the video, please feel free to like it. And also, if you want to stay in touch, please do subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.